Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Bars and Bells. My name is Ian. And I'm Lauren. And if we don't have a case of the hiccups here, we're going to enjoy a restore and recharge practice here in our studio. As usual, we'll start with our breath, work into some small bits like our hands and our feet. And from there, we're going to start to introduce a newer movement today called a windmill. But first, we have to lay down the groundwork of our hinge. Don't forget the upper body will be some push-ups. And as we follow along with this practice, we'll be strong, we'll be fun, and, and we'll be together. And our hiccups will be gone. And our hiccups will be gone. So if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. If Subscribe. you want to wait to the end to see if you enjoy this exercise, give it a thumbs up. You will, up so end. just thumbs up now. And one last thing before we get started. Lauren is wearing a microphone here. We're still waiting on one more part that we can both be mic'd up, but we hope that we can both uh, talk through here. So if I do this, it's because I want him to talk into my mic. And if for some reason the sound does go out, please let us know in that chat feature as well. Let us know in the chat feature if you have any other questions, either at the beginning, middle, or end of our practice, and we can address some of those uh, as we go forward. Let's relax for a second and start with our breath. This might help my hiccups. Might bring them out too. Seated, hands on belly, sniff in through the nose for five seconds. Go. One, two, three, four, Fill the belly, pull the belly in on an exhale for five seconds. Repeat, breathe in, exhale. Three more. This last breath will hold for 10 seconds at the top. And finish with the exhale. For some reason, I always like to breathe with my eyes closed. I always like to, I know. It feels weird with your eyes open, mm -hmm. staring into the camera. Also, open, cured, closed. cured. Boo. Okay. Feet. Feet. Take a look at your feet. And here we are again doing our big toe lift offs. So for 10 seconds at a time, lift up single or double. Let's go double. Be fishing on time. Ooh, not as much control that way. Okay. Try to lift both thumbs for five more seconds. And by thumbs, he means toes. Three, two, relax. Heavy on the big toes now. Lift up those other four. And we're looking to spread. Spread for four. Three, two, and place them down. Oops. Repeat one more time on those big toes. Let's lift up those big toes again. I have such a hard time staying heavy on my big toe mound. Stay heavy on that big toe mound for two more seconds. Relax that tension. And repeat last time lifting up those last four outside finger toes there as we spread and spread and spread and spread. And yeah, I see that challenge, Lauren. And then return those to the ground. One more quick thing about feet. I'm going to do a quarter turn here. At the foot, can you keep your toes flat and pull your ball of foot to the arch? It's a very subtle movement. That would be something we're trying to try to avoid again, where the flat toes pulling. This is one of those triad exercises I call the toilet drills because no one wants to sit here and pay full price to do it. But having tension, being able to transmit tension into the floor will help with strength and your balance. So try a couple more on this side, keeping those toes flat and pulling. Hopefully that feels like work on the arch of the bottom of the foot. Lauren, take us away with those hands now. Hands. <clears throat> Arms out, palms up. Start just with our isolating each finger. So thumb towards center, thumb out. Index finger in. I also, looking at your fingers, you have three bends in your finger, right? Your knuckle, well, two, whatever you want to call it, in this one. So try to bend all three. When I do this finger, if you can see it from there, you'll notice that I can't, 
quite bend that third part. And on this one, I can. So try to make it even. Try to bend all three knuckles, okay? And then our middle finger, bending those three knuckles and back out. Oh. Ring finger, I find this one very hard on the upper part of that nail part. And then last one, baby finger. And again, my last digit part. What is that called? A metacarpal, uh, a carpal. Uh, anyway, I'll look that up and get back to you. Phalange, phalange. the third phalange, phalange joint. Anyway, let's do our full wrist circles now. So back to arms at your side. Uh, forearms up like you're resting something on them, making a fist, pulling down into your extension. We're going to go right into our circles. So retract your shoulders, pull down into extension, or pulling the back of the hand towards your forearm. Start drawing your circles towards the midline of your body. That means pinkies are going to come towards the center. Pulling towards the center with those pinkies. Check in, our forearms still facing the ceiling. You're coming around to that flexion position in the wrists or where you're pulling your wrists towards your face or your biceps. Out to the thumb side as far as you can go and scrape that circle all the way around to where you started. Now switch direction. Thumb side, nice tight grip. pulling all the way up, full flex, pinky side in and pull back to where you started. Hold three, retract your blades to one, and then shake it out. I find that a lot of work. Skimming a rink. From there, we'll do a little head neck. I'm gonna sit back. Nice. Sitting up tall, let's expose our bad neck or our chicken head or our computer posture. Now take your face and push it straight back. So you stack your chin and you make a really nice double chin. No one's looking. Reach forward again, chicken neck, and then stack your vertebrae. Keep that stacked position, it's your axis. Now rotate your head on that axis, looking over a shoulder, gentle. And then to the other side, trying to keep, if you had a pole going down the center of your head and into your spine, that's what you're rotating on. I know that's quite vicious, but I think it paints a good picture. Other side one more time, and last rotation. And again, grow into that. Create room by growing up that pole Lauren's mentioning here, pulling ourselves up. Back to, to center. Okay, our pole is now out of our head, which is great. Keep your chin tuck and gently look towards the ceiling. Be cautious about the back of your head and neck, especially depending on who you are. Looking at the ceiling, now open your mouth, and close your mouth, pulling your jaw up and over. And then open your mouth and pull your jaw up. And that should feel like a nice stretch through the front of your throat, neck. Keep your chin tucked as you push down, pushing the vertebrae out the back of your head to tuck your chin towards your chest. One last time, keep your chin tucked, roll it up towards the ceiling. Try that open and closed mouth again. Open, pull, closed, open, pull, closed. Last one, down. We have one more little stretch. I like to now go a little ear to shoulder. Now the rod comes back in my head, but now the rod is at a 45 degree angle through my head. I'm gonna rotate on that rod like I'm gonna sniff my armpit. And that I feel through the opposing side, especially through the front of the scaling muscles in the front of my neck, attaching to my clavicle, my shoulder. What's that called? Uh, clavicle. And then gently towards the ceiling, collarbone. And then gently chin towards that armpit again. <clears throat> and last one, chin to the ceiling, pivoting on that pole. Come to a neutral head, pull your head on straight. Let's go to the other side. Head tilts, put the rod in your head at 45 degrees, and then rotate on that rod. Sniff the armpit, rotate on the rod to look up at the ceiling. Oh. Sniff your armpit. Last one, looking at the ceiling. Back to a neutral, nose forward, pull your head back on straight, and relax. Excellent. Excellent. That's that head and neck, 
small shapes, small shapes. Why would we do the head and neck like that? Because you're gonna fall asleep on the couch in a contorted position and knowing how to come back from that position will be strong for a real life experience. We're gonna stay seated for one more second here. Getting cozy. Well, just making sure they can hear you. <clears throat> Staying seated for just a couple more moments here, talking to isometric movements at the first here. Isometric means nothing moves, but you work hard for it. As an example, isometrics would be for me to try to pick this foot or the hip off the floor without actually creating clear separation. So for relax for a second, Ian. Now for 10 seconds together, work hard, recruit from right here as we try to pull this foot off the floor. Ready to go? Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> for 10, can you feel things shorten up, take things the slack out of the system? And for five more seconds, continue to try to pull that foot off the floor. For three and two, and relax that tension. Repeat the same thing on the other side. Pulling up off the floor without creating separation and touch where you feel the most work. For five, four, three, easy on the off switch again. Let's repeat that one final time each. Isometric, nothing moves, but lots of tension, go. Pull the foot off the floor without leaving the floor for five, four, three, two, and relax. And one more time, same thing on the other side. Cramp up with that tension and try to pull off the floor for five, four, three, two, one. That's hip flexion lifting up. Hip extension is now how we would like to get up from the chair eventually. Hip extension, take a foot and start pressing heavy in the floor with your bum. And this time for 10, nine, can you feel, they can't see my hand, but can you feel the work on the back of the body Three. for two more seconds and relax. Repeat to the other side, press from your butt cheek. Don't lean, don't oh, lean. Oh, sorry, I'm looking don't at the lean. microphone colors. Don't lean, four, three, relax. Repeating that one final time on the other side, the original side, push down. Can you talk to this bum cheek? Can you get it to be excited to turn on? For three, two, coast that tension away. And our final movement on the left or other side, go. Cramp it up, brace, brace, squeeze your butt, three, and two, and relax. Whew. Next, we'll extend one leg, very slow, extend the leg out front. Either with the dorsiflexed ankle or your plantar, ballet or karate, you choose on that ankle. I'm gonna do my ballet. And from the ballet, could you externally rotate in that hip or show that inseam up? And then that internal rotation or hiding the inseam. Try that for a couple in a row. The knee will want to bend. Maybe the optimal angle isn't really achieved by the sitting position. I like it. But think about isolating that long femur bone up in our hip. Return to neutral where the kneecap faces center. Bend the knee and switch. Extend, point. It might come off the floor a little bit if you have your ballet foot like I do. And that internal and external rotation on the hip. One or two more, keeping the knee as safe straight as you can. Last one or two there. And rest. We might need a little bit more room here, Lauren. So okay, well maybe I should talk right. then. Scooch to your right. And here we'll get into our figure fours. Oh, maybe I don't wanna talk. All right, extending one leg straight. I have to walk my other leg out a little further because I find this quite challenging. I'm going to take my extended leg without tilting my hips or my belt. I'm going to pull it up and then I'm going to try to rotate it so it gets on my other leg. Once it's there, I might adjust it a little bit, pulling my ankle on straight, my foot to my shin. Everything's organized and in line here. Hips are level. 
Let's just open and close our gate here, meaning our knee is going to pull towards our chest, but it's just rotating in its socket. And then it's going to gently open or push towards the floor. Internally rotate again, pulling it towards your chest. And then externally rotating it, pushing it to the floor for five more seconds. Five, four, with its own power. Three, two, keep that power. Try to lift your ankle off. Hold, hold, unrotate it in its socket. Put the leg down, shake it out. Great distinction there. Avoid the pushing with the hands. Use the power to make that an active stretch for your hips rather than the passive stretch. Great distinction. Other side. Other leg extends. Knee pulls towards chest. It rotates in its socket. Stay tall, Laura. I know. <laughs> the higher the chair, the easier the exercise. Oh, that's, I was going to flip it up. Okay, so foot's in line, toe pulls towards shin, nice flat foot. Let's open and close our gait again. Knee pulls towards chest, a little internal or adduction, whatever you like to call it. And then external rotation from the hip, push that knee down and away. This, keep repeating, and these moves for me are quite challenging, especially pushing my knee towards the floor. My hips don't externally rotate extremely well. Now push that down for five seconds, drive it down five with its own power. Four, three, two, keep that tension, lift the foot off with control, unrotate it, place it down. Whew, whew. Great. So that has been a move. That has been a move that we've done more often near the end of our practice. There was one modification we should have maybe set out there. If you had that hard time, you couldn't get your leg up here, find that higher chair, or we could do the same thing from down here. A mm -hmm. little bit of a, a nice modification. Before we move into our cat cows, let's do one rotation for our spine and then we'll get cat cowing a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna put my hands across my chest, feet are flat on the floor, knees are pointed forward. Hips and knees do not move. Just start like we did with our head and neck. There's a rod going down your spine. You're going to rotate on your rod. So just rotate one direction and then come back through center. Rod's still there. Rotate. That's cute. Keeping the back chin to center. over the sternum. One more time just to rotate. So you're not looking any further than what you're actually rotating. Back to center. Last one, I get a lat cramp when I do this. Mm -hmm. All right, pull that back to center. We're gonna break our rod a little bit. We're gonna rotate on that. Our rod is now out of us and we're gonna tip our shoulder, our back shoulder towards the back corner. And then we're gonna pull ourselves back up center. We're gonna try to rotate further on that side and dip again, back shoulder dipping, back up tall, unrotate yourself. Go the other way. Who got further? Rotate. Is it a competition? No, no, Dip. no. This is like bike riding. Suddenly it's a competition no, no, biking no, no. up the hill. Rotate more. No, Dip. competition with you. Oh. Back to center. Unrotate. Excellent. Creating All right. tension here lets you get a little bit further. Not a competition with you. Oh, okay. Just with on myself. Cat cows. Cat cow. Either from the floor or from your box. I will be on the box here. I can move wherever you want. Okay. Starting with our low back first. Hands gripping whatever they're gripping. Shoulders are packed. Only your pelvis. For this, I need a slight knee bend. I'm going to, only moving my lower half, gently pull on my abs and tuck my tail under me. So I'm rounding my low back. Then from there, I'm gonna slowly tilt my tail towards the ceiling. Good. And then I'm gonna pull on my core and try to round under me. Rounding under that pelvis. Again, nothing else is moving. Slowly tail to ceiling. We'll do that one more time each way. Maybe each time you've found a centimeter or even a millimeter more flexion and extension here, tuck underneath you 
as you're tucking here, think to yourself, this is not how I'm going to spend my whole day sitting in my chair. Slowly tilt your tail to the ceiling. And, but at the same time, I'm also not going to spend my whole day in this flexed position either. Oh, it's just nice to go there. Come back to a neutral spine. Stay where you are. Ian's going to be my model for our upper back, so I'm going to move. We're going to put our low back into a neutral place. So you should be there already because that's where you ended. Pelvis is in a neutral place. From here, we're going to think about, let's put on our bra and think about where our bra line would be and start right there. I want you to have a nice low granny bra too. So think about pushing that chest. As I get older, I get more granny bras. But anyway, think about pushing that chest through, pushing those vertebrae through, keeping the chin tucked. I'm pushing on that vertebrae there. Three, two, ease off, but don't go anywhere. Take a breath. Make sure pelvis is still neutral. I'm gonna poke a little higher now, okay? Pelvis is neutral, start pushing that chest through, extending, keeping head neutral. My hand is pushing through those vertebrae for three, two, ease off. We're going to do one more. Nothing might look like it's moving, and this is okay. Ian's sweating. Low back, neutral. Here I go. My hand or my fist is now pushing a little bit higher in between your shoulder blades there, trying to drive those vertebrae through to the front of the room for four, three, two, easy off of that. If you'd like to, you could just stand up. If you want to, Ian's going to do our little uh, inchworm up. Hey. Inchworm. inchworm. Feel free to inchworm if you'd like. Get some space available when you're ready. And we're going to begin firing up our core, but Turkish get up down. So picking an arm, you be my model on the ground again. Yep. Picking an arm, pressing or over chest. Step back, lunge. Step back, lunge. Front foot opens. Chop hips, hand finds floor. Sweep through onto your elbow and then push away from that elbow, lying on your back. Excellent. We're lying on our back here. We're going to get into our dead bug to fire up our core a little bit. One or two legs at a time, bring your knees up over your chest. Great, place your hands, both knees, plural. Place your hands on the front of your quads. Excellent. Start breathing and ramping up tension. Your knees or your quads are going to push into your hands and your hands are going to push back into your legs. Hold this. Breathe. I want you to think about your low back here. It's fairly neutral. It's not ramming into the floor, but it's also not arching into the air, creating an arc de triomphe under there. So keeping that tension for five, four, three, two, slowly off. Great. Flip over onto your stomach where we're going to do our prone plank. We're going to start in our super low plank here where we just do our tuck unders and then we'll bring it up next time. So you're lying flat. Maybe your hands are under your head or they're at your sides in the W. Chin is tucked. Shoulders are pulled down. Legs are together. We're going to focus on our low abs here. So we're going to think about tucking our tail underneath us and connecting our ribs hips. I should be able to come through the computer screen and put my cold foot right under your warm belly there. And you're pulling that belly off the floor for another five. Your chest might be pushing into the floor. That's okay. Three, two, slowly off, especially if you have things on your chest. We're going to do this one more time. Three, two, tuck hips, connect ribs and hips. Good. I warm my foot under your belly button there. Your butts are squeezed. Your shoulders are pulled down. Four, three, two, easy off. Excellent. Flip back over. We Turkish get up. We get up, up on the same side we got down on. Push, roll, pull to that elbow. Find your hand. Keep that shoulder packed. Lift, sweep, knee lands where your butt was. Hand leaves floor, front foot moves, up together. Ooh. Nice, Ian. Toss that bell to the what other arm. Goes up, must come down. Don't get copyrighted. Same thing on the other side. <laughs>
Step back lunge. Front foot moves. Hand finds chops hip. Lift sweep. Elbow. Slow raise down. Five, four, three, two, and down. Great. So now on our backs, same thing, two core exercises from the floor. Scooch forward a little bit just so we're But stay forward. close to me. Yep. There we go. There we go. Okay. We have our hips on the floor, feet on the floor, upper body straight. Okay. Arms are often placed either at our sides or over top of our chest. That's where Lauren's will be, uh, just so you can see the hips a little bit better. Grip the feet to the floor. <laughs> Grip. Squeeze the butt cheeks like our hip extension from the chair where you clench them up. Do you have that activity? Do you have that connection? Great. From here, we'll articulate up the spine into our hip bridge, cramping glutes, bracing the core, and maintaining your breath. For today, I'd like to hold this top position for 10 seconds. Three, two, go. In 10 seconds, you're gonna straighten out those elbows. You're gonna pack those armpits. You're gonna brace the core, squeeze the bum, and pull your knees together for three more seconds. Pull those knees together for two more seconds and roll down the spine now from the top to the bottom. Beautiful control. That L spine or low back, probably the hardest for you. Take a rest. Reestablish your connection to the floor, perhaps a chin tuck, patterning that with your heavy feet into the floor as well. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Arms overhead if that's, uh, over chest if that's okay. Straighten out those elbows, locking out the triceps. Cramp the feet in the floor. Cramp the glutes, extending the hips with the power of the bum, core brace for safety for the back. Three, two, go. We're gonna hold this for 10 seconds. Pull those knees together, Lauren. Pull those knees together. I am. Squeeze the bum cheeks. I am. the core, maintaining the breath. Two, one. Relax the tension from the top to the bottom, keeping the tension on the core. And relax. We are hopefully go, uh, Hopefully adding some push-ups by the end of today's practice. So for our second core hold, let's get to the high plank or the tall planks position here. Wide open hands, rooting them just like our feet, screwing those elbows in, packing the shoulders, and stepping back to our high plank. Hips, head, spine, beautiful straight line. From here, for 10 seconds, cramp up. Cramp your butt cheeks, cramp your glutes, cramp your abs, breathe for three, Two, gently knees onto the floor. Take a rest. Say what you did really well. What did you look well, Lauren? I breathed. You breathed, great. Maybe squeeze your bum harder this time. Three, two, one, 10 seconds. Heavy tension to the floor, pull those legs together, pull your hands to the belly button, feet to the belly button. Five more seconds of breathing. Three. And two, and coast away. Flip back over to the back side, and let's repeat one get up, back up. Ugh. First again, you go. Elbow drive using that hip extension we just warmed up. Find your hand, shoulder packed, lift and sweep, trying to keep that top arm straight and overhead. Hand leaves the floor, front foot moves, both legs up, pull your bell down. Chuck it out of the room. Excellent. She loves chucking those bells. I can't chuck them nearly as much. Hinges. First, one move that we would love to share with you. We have some requisites, like our hinge, to get to it first. This is a kettlebell windmill. I'm not going to stand that close. How about I talk and he models? Ultimately done in an overhead position with a kettlebell. Our feet are about hip width apart, slightly turned to about 45 degrees, and it's a hip hinge we're doing. You should not be doing this right now. You're just watching. It's a hip hinge. So notice how Ian's hip is driving out towards me. This leg is nice and straight. Other leg has a slight bend. Okay. The whole time while he was doing that, his spine remained neutral. There was no rotate. Well, there was a small rotation, but there was no bending of his spine. This is what we're going to practice our hinge today. So those hips are reaching away, legs are staying nice and long. And a balance more right there. 
and a nice straight spine, hips driving away from you. So we're gonna work through some exercises today to get us towards our windmill. First, we must start with a hinge. So if we had a chair, put a chair behind your back. Move forward, Lauren. There's your chair, you could use a wall the same. There's maybe three inches there between Lauren's bum and her back. From this position, she'll chop the hips and push her bum back to touch the chair. From this position, squeeze your bum cheeks together. That wasn't very far. And extend your hips to tall. Did you feel a crease on the front of your hips? If you did, it would look like this. And then up. If you didn't feel a crease on the front of your hips, it would probably look like this. Rounded upper back. The point of our hinge is to keep the load on the hips. The load of heavy laundry jugs, beer cases, gardening peat moss bags, you name it. Hinge to keep the load on the hips. Anvils. And then extend up. We'll come back to that again. Watch one more time. Just watch this time. This is an exceptional version of our hinge. Lauren will take those hands. Just watch. Chop. We're looking for a hip crease. As we pull back, do we feel that set in? Squeeze your butt. Come up tall. One more time. Just watch. Chop. Hinge. Cramp up the glutes. And come up to tall. That's our hinge. We'll come back to that in a second. We're going to crawl. We're going to use our hinge yep. to do our elephant crawl. If you don't like head upside down, maybe this crawl isn't for you, or it's modified Ian's way. Here we go. Take your hinge, chop your hips, slight knee bends, spine stays long, hands find the floor. Slowly walk your hands forward so you're in your kind of down dog like position or your peak here. Trying to find both heels to the floor. Trying. Be gentle. Maybe you just stand here and you just hang out. If you'd like to come with me for a little walk, we're going to take a hand opposite hand and foot are stepping in small steps. Trying to keep that tail tilted to the ceiling. Feeling a nice hamstring stretch as we go here for four, three, two. Plant your feet uh, in the same line. Slowly start bending your knees, walking your hands towards your feet, pushing your hips back. You should now be in a hinge position. Your spine is nice and long. Your shins are vertical. Your butt's reaching back. Push your hips through. Extend. Stand up tall. I punch in the stomach. Punch in the butt. There you go. First crawl, first set of hinges. We're going to return to the hinge. If you have something small on the floor, that could be a kettlebell. Please don't lift it yet. Let's aim to touch the kettlebell. I'm going to stand behind Lauren and repeat that exercise on the wall for five. And Lauren is going to touch the handle for also five repetitions. My feet are slightly wider than my hips. You figure out where your feet like to be. From here, my legs are straight. I have that rod that was in our warm up is running through my head, down my spine, and coming out my tailbone. Don't break that rod, it doesn't even bend. Take your hands. Chop your hips back, like Ian said. Knees bend, shins stay vertical, feet are heavy. Pause in the bottom of your hinge here. If you have a bell, grip it. If you don't have a bell, pretend to grip it. Pack your shoulders. Think about where you feel this load right now. Mine is in my hamstrings and my glutes. Three, two, up without. Drive your hips through, stand up tall. Repeat, chop hips, nice long spine. Grip imaginary kettlebell. Create some tension by making some fists there, even if you don't have a bell. Up without. Three more. Chop hips. Hinge. Load on butts and hammies. Abs are braced. Up. Two. Chop. Shins vertical. Abs braced at the bottom to lift your heavy bell. Up. Last one. Chop hips. Hinge. Neutral head. Neutral spine. Up. Excellent. To another crawl. 
The Liz. The lizard crawl. So again, I'll be modifying that lizard crawl with the chair. I will be crawling. We're gonna use our hinge, chop hips, bend knees, hands find the floor, walk yourself out to that tall push-up like position. From here, my right hand finds my, sorry, my right foot finds my right hand or close to it. I try to keep my back leg straight. I'm breathing. And then from here, I'm gonna put that foot back and switch hands. I'm actually not gonna crawl because it's better this way. Left hand beside left foot, back leg stays straight, embracing that stretch, switch. Right and right again. This time, if you'd like an added bonus, we could open up that leg from the hip like we did earlier, rotating that femur open, back to center, feet switch, foot comes up, breathing, shoulders down, opening up, Maybe one more each side if you'd like. Last one, open up from that hip. More bonus would be a little bit of a push up there. Back up, last one, foot to hand, open up. Maybe a bit of a push up. Great, foot goes back. Walk your hands back to your, towards your feet. Start bending your knees. In the bottom position, you're in your hinge. Stand up. Drive your hips through. Excellent. Great. I'd like to do one more set of our hinges, Lauren. One Great. more set. I'm gonna to stick to that wall and really look for that karate chop action and the tension on my hamstrings. If I touch the wall and I'm six inches away from the wall, I'm gonna to move to six and a quarter. Try to keep your bum going back. It will help your strength and protect the safety for your spine. Mm -hmm. All right. Feet are in the same position they were last time. Legs are straight, standing up tall, rods down your spine. Take your hands, chop your hips, sit back, grip your imaginary bell, hold, load up hammies, three, two, up without. If you feel comfortable lifting your bell, you could. Chop hips, grip bell, pack shoulders, fake lift, up without. Three more, chop, grip, pack, hold, up without. Two, chop, shins vertical, abs braced. Before you lift up your imaginary object, take a nice breath in, support your spine. Oh, <sighs> sorry, got a little excited there. Last time, chop hips, grip, pack, brace, up. <sighs> Shake it out. What's always fun is when you have new people in and you're doing all these hinges and they're like, man, this is boring. And then you see them the next day. And they're like, oh my goodness, I felt my hamstrings so much. The intention. See, up, I know what I'm talking about. The tension upstairs and the tension you can generate your body Sorry. will give you that exercise burn or whatever you're looking for to get from that. I'm just gonna see and make sure. Sounds great. Great. Uh, we have one more crawl, I believe, here. Uh, one more the crawl. Bear. The bear. So either in a hover position where we don't move or where we can move. Figure it yeah. out. <laughs> Just trying to blast them in. Just All right. Uh, Do your hinge again. Chop hips. Hands find floor. Walk yourself out. Just put your knees down for one second. And maybe this is where you say, let's all do this exercise with our knees down the first time. Hands on your shoulders, knees stay touching the floor. Toes are tucked, though. There's a dot under your belly button on the floor. Ready, set, pull everything towards that dot. Nothing moves though, just pull. Pull, pull your legs to the dot, pull your hands to the dot, pull your hands towards your knees. Hold, three, two, and slowly relax. If that was enough for you, stay. If you'd like an added bonus, lift your knees. Three, two, knees lift two or three inches off the floor. The dot is still there, pull towards it. Pull, five, four, three, two, easy off. We should do one more. Last one, same rules, set, pull towards the dot, hold. Added bonus, lift a foot, don't twist. No twisting, put that foot down, switch, hold. Put that foot down, pull again, three, two, and easy off. 
One last time on our hinge, so knees will come up, hands will walk back. You'll be in that nice hinge position. Hips drive through, up tall. Some push-ups to end. Some push-ups and the fondues. Yeah, two rounds. Awesome. Two rounds. So this is again one of those new but not new movements that we've come up with, the Jane fondue. Excellent. For balance. Would you like to do that? We'll do that first and then Ian will do our push-ups for us today. Oh, I was saying the Jane Fondue. That's this okay. Like second helping of Jane Fondue. Find your feet wider than your hips and slightly turned out. From here, we're going to tuck our hips under and slide down into our toaster. We're in our toaster here. I want you to stay low and just shift your weight over. So you're driving your knee over this toe. Keep your toes heavy. Push yourself back. Stay low. Stay low this whole time. Well, kind of. Stay low. Knee over toe. Grip the floor. This is good for your ankle too. Go back. Stay low. Creep across. Push that knee over the toe. Think about transferring weight so you could lift up the other leg, but you're still knee bend. Three, two, foot goes down. Shift across low. Knee over toe. Try to transfer weight to lift that foot. Three, Two, one more time, staying low. Knee shifts over, transfer weight. This is where we're gonna break our rule. We're gonna extend our knee, hold. We're gonna bend our knee again, place the foot down, creep. Other side, knee over toe, point other foot, try to lift it, extend at the knee, hold. Knee bends, foot comes down, come to center and pop yourself out of that toaster by pulling together tall. Excellent. I'm gonna watch Ian do push-ups. If you'd like to watch with me, you can. If you'd like to do them, you should. <laughs> You're gonna hinge forward like we've been doing, keeping with the hinge. We have a real rod right here. Here it is. I have a rod for Ian. So I'm gonna take this rod and I'm gonna put it on his head. Our other rods are missing, their, this is their short one. So this rod should be touching his butt too. Whether he's from his knees or from his toes, he is going to do a couple push-ups. So he's slowly working himself towards the floor, keeping that rib hip connection. The broom or the rod is balancing on his back for three, two, now you should be all the way on the floor. Scoop your hips under like we did in that prone plank where we started today, and one unit, push yourself up, up. Let's do that again. Either from the toes or from the knees, lift, 10 second descent, everyone, go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, all the way down. One more press up. We're British today, press up. Knees lift, hands walk back, slight knee bend to walk yourself through that hinge. Good, load up hammies and glute, keep that spine nice and extended. And butts up, oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> I got a little oh. excited with that dowel. One more time. One more. Time. Here, take my rock. Oh. Uh, just for a second. All right, back to that second, or I'm, I'm wider than my second position. Sumo. Sumo, yeah, toes slightly out. Same thing, tuck, slide down your toaster, knees push out. Here we go, we're gonna stay low until I tell you to break the rules. Shift, transfer that weight right away. Break a rule, extend your knee. Modify a rule. Bend your knee, toe, foot comes down, sneak across. Knee over toe, extend the other leg. Now straighten at the knee, hold, find a balance. Knee bends, foot comes down, creeps across. Two more with some added bonuses. Knee over, leg straightens, transfer weight, extend at the knee, maybe stay, maybe roll up and hold onto your toe for three, two. Find the floor with the heel. Bend the knee, transfer creep across, other side, knee over toe, transfer weight, then extend, roll up, three, 
two, control the down, bend the knee, creep. Last time, shift, transfer, extend, roll to balance, three, two, control down, knee bend, sorry, foot comes down. If you didn't hear Ian, he's complaining you can't see him. Knee over toe, extend the leg, roll up, three, two, control the down, bend the knee, shift back to center. Are you still in your toaster? Your butt shouldn't be touching the hot wires behind you. And then drive yourself up, extending your knees. One more set of push-ups, one more set. I've called this position for a long time, the hip holster position. And lately in our online practice here, I've really, really loved this position. It just looks like I really like standing near him. She does. Okay, push-ups. Push-ups, last set. Yeah, Ian's gonna should. do, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna do some negatives or five in a row? He's gonna do five regular push-ups I've decided for him. Holy. If that's in your bucket list of tricks, you should do that too. If the negatives is in your, okay, he's just showing off now. If the negatives are in your list of tricks, you should do that. But whatever you're gonna do, last set of push-ups. Practice your one arms What's in the future. Okay, focus. You're supposed to be doing five push-ups with them. He's the worst model. Okay, hopefully you're on number three. And one more push-up here. Everything stays nice and tight together. Good. Do you see Ian's chicken neck? Yeah, call him out for that. Good. Okay, legs extend, back up via your hinge. Hinge, bend your knees, push your hips back. Nice long spine, drive your hips through. Excellent, that's better. Great. Let's quickly finish up with our leg lifts. Yeah. From lying or from standing? Standing. Standing. Final exercise. Going. We have 10 live people here. I know it's oh, so welcome, cool. Welcome. Love seeing those double digits. So we should we should really we should really have 10 likes then. Right now we have five. That's what I'll just peer pressure them more. Lateral leg raises. Feel polite fire on. We can both get hips. a little closer. Both hips. Standing on tall on our inside leg. We're gonna take our outside leg keeping our belt straight. We're just going to take that foot out to the side. Check in on your inside hip. Are you still tall on that inside hip or is that inside hip touching your chair? If so, pop it up. Now, take that outside leg, rotate it open so I see your inseam. Rotate it closed. Likely, let's rotate it back open. Let's keep that rotation and let's lift it off the floor, not hiking our hips and holding and staying tall on that inside leg with and turnout. keeping that rotation, yes, with turnout for five, four, three, two, and gentle down. So that was our turned out position or your inseam forward. Let's try the same thing on an internal rotation. Take your leg, internally rotate it. That means hide your inseam or show me that most of the outseam you can. Keep that rotation, don't hike a hip, lift it. That is high. Higher for me, five, four, three, two, soft down. Pick which one was harder for you, do it again. Rotate I'm to where you turtle. need to, rotate and lift. Hold, hold, five, four, three, two, soft touch down. Draw that circle to center. Pull the leg underneath you, relax. Think about it for a second, where do you feel that? I do feel it in my working leg, but I still feel a ton of work in my standing leg. You should feel this too. Let's switch sides. Last move. Wipe the upper lip sweat, it's getting warm. Stand tall on your inside leg again, okay? Check in, touch it. There should be a dimple there. Take that foot out to the side. Open it, the leg. Close the leg, open the leg, inseams forward, three, two, lift, hold, hold. I'm trying to see your inseam here, I should see the heel. 
the, the inside of your heel. Three, two, soft down. Internally rotate it, hide your inseam. Three, two, lift it. Hold it, lift it. More. Three, two, soft down. Pick which was harder. Do it again. Rotate which direction? Lift, hold. Tall on that inside leg. That butt cheek is working hard inside. Five, four, three, two, soft down. Draw the circle to the front. Pull the leg under you. Wipe your brow. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you so much for joining today's practice. 10 people, seven likes, hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, steal your kids' email addresses and put them in as a subscriber as well. It remains a lot of fun for us to feel connected to you at home, sharing in our movements, movements that we share in as well. They are yeah. not our movements, but we love sharing them with you and refining them. So thank you for your participation, mm -hmm. your Keeps patience. Keeps us going too. It keeps us going. We yeah. recognize this is tough for everyone. No one is in uh, a desired routine. And this uh, is, is healthy for us. It's good for us just to keep going upstairs and uh, to stay engaged with our community here. So thank you for being a part of it. Mm -hmm. This has been the follow along rest and restore practice. I'm going to catch up with a little bit of uh, chat here as we just try to finish up as well. So thank you for coming and being a part of Bards and Bells. We'll see you, excellent, good, good. Um, uh, Wednesday tonight we have our mobility club. Yep. Club in, and then uh, tomorrow we're back to our 5 p.m. kettlebell class. So we have done a lot of exploring over the YouTube mm -hmm. as well as other resources, and we are unique. There is nothing like our program online. And whether that's good or bad, it, it is the way it is. And we love this. We do recommend that you balance out some of your training. This is great. This is great. Some kettlebells, some aerobics, go for a walk, go for a bike ride. Do other things too. Mm -hmm. It's very important to keep doing as much as you can at this time. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lecture anymore. So we're going to finish off with our... And don't be hard mostly, on yourself. Uh, mostly official sign off. You don't need to work so hard that you barf. Never. I never have, and I played varsity hockey. Never. So never. it's not necessary. Well, I sat on the bench. Anyway. <laughs> they don't need to know that. Right. I did score once. Yep. Okay. So our quasi official sign off here goes along the lines of we will continue to train simply, we will continue to remain strong, and we do look forward to seeing you in class maybe as soon as tonight or on Friday at 9 a.m. Thank you so much for joining. Tell your friends, much appreciated. <laughs> Thank Take you. Bye-bye.